This is the uh, Watts bar plant. Up here is where all the control rods slide in and out of the core. And then there's these four steam generators. You can see the steam generators at Watts bar are as big, if not bigger, than the reactors. And they also have to operate at these very high pressures. Now, there's four of them. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Big pipes. The number one accident people worry about with this kind of reactor is what's called a double-ended pipe break. One of these eight pipes, for whatever reason, shears. And all of a sudden, pressure is lost in the reactor. Steam doesn't uh, take away heat nearly as well as liquid water does from a surface. So all of a sudden, your fuel rods are not being cooled nearly as effectively as they were before. Now, fission will stop. Because one of the things the water is doing, it's slowing down the neutrons. So without the water, the fission reaction stops. You don't have to put control rods in or anything. The reactors, it will turn off immediately. But the containment building, I mean, look. Look at the size of the reactor. Look at the size of the containment building. It's huge. It's much, much, much bigger than the reactor. And that's all driven by that thousand to one difference in the density between steam and liquid water. This building is the size it is. And it's the way it is precisely to accommodate this event. They've designed this reactor so if this happens, all the steam is captured in this building. A design basis accident for a pressurized water reactor that is evaluated in which we believe the reactors can respond safely is what's called a large break loss coolant accident. You could think about going to a real big pressurized water reactor, the real thing, getting high explosives, strapping it onto the cold leg of the reactor, and blowing taking that leg, take the pipe apart, mm. and, and do the test. Um, there's a number of reasons why that's just a bad idea. And the best way once we're getting into rather severe conditions is to make use of simulations validated by scaled experiments. I think that would surprise people though to realize that the best way to simulate a fluid is with a different fluid, not with the same fluid. Because your first impression would be, if I want to simulate water, I should use water. Yep, yep. But if you want to do a scaled effect, that's not the case. If you went back to the 1960s and asked, how were you going to put in place a system to reliably provide cooling under emergency conditions where the normal shutdown cooling system is not functioning? Really, the only practical way to do that was to use active systems with redundant and diverse components and power supplies and all of that. That was, that was the reason we ended up with the Gen 2 approach to active safety. And South Korea, Japan, France, you know, there's lots of countries that, that are still stuck there, right? And the United States, we're the one country that really has developed the capability to do something much more sophisticated in terms of validating models for the reliability of passive safety systems and therefore to be able to shift towards using systems that do not require electrical power